I'm Michael Morris, Superintendent of Schools in Amherst, and this is the latest episode of Window into ARPS. And for today's episode, I'm thrilled to be welcoming um, Tim Allison, a teacher at Fort River School, and Kira, one of our students, to talk about the Civic Literacy and Organizing Project, and more generally about how students are getting very involved, uh, both locally and, and beyond locally, uh, to make our world a better place. So thank you both for being here. You're welcome. I appreciate welcome. it. And we've scheduled this a couple times. Weather got in the way. I think illness got in the way once. So we're, I'm so glad to be finally sitting down and talking about this. And we're taping this uh, on a day where there's a primary election uh, today in New Hampshire. And so a great day to be talking about civic, civic organizing and being involved in our communities. So perfect timing for us. So thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Yeah. And uh, Tim, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Sure. Um, I uh, have been teaching at Fort River since 2008, um, except for a, a short stint uh, teaching third grade in South Deerfield. Uh, and prior to that, I, was, uh, I worked as an organizer in the nonprofit sector, uh, basically teaching college students uh, how to make an impact on, on things that they cared about. Um, and so that, that, in part, is sort of what led me to develop this project. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you. And Kira, can you tell us a little um, bit about yourself? I'm a seventh grader and I was like participating in this and I feel like I kind of went a little bit above and beyond and <laughs> took over a little bit. Fantastic. And you tell us a little have you did you go to Fort River for I went to Fort River all seven years. Seven years and now you're in seventh grade. Fantastic. Thank you for being here. It's really nice. Last year we had a couple opportunities to have students involved and your voice is incredibly important. So thank you for doing this. Um, and so I could start with either of you, but uh, maybe on this one actually start with Mr. Austin. Can you share a little bit about the Civic Literacy and Organizing Project um, more generally, and then we'll get into the kind of the uh, nitty gritty of what happened last year and the work that was what work that occurred. Sure. Uh, so the project was sort of born out of um, some work that the sixth grade team had been doing at Fort River for a number of years. Uh, and uh, we, back then, we just called it the Civic Literacy Project. And we started with students writing to elected officials about issues that they cared about. Um, and then eventually students were uh, working in small groups to develop proposals uh, that they then made to those elected, elected officials um, in miniature lobbying meetings. Um, so students had some really excellent experiences meeting with people like uh, Representative Ellen Story, Congressman Jim McGovern. Um, but the team always wanted to take things to the next step and really teach students how to, um, how to organize for social change. And so uh, during the, uh, or sorry, before the 2018-2019 school year, we applied for a grant from a magazine called Teaching Tolerance. Um, and we uh, won the grant and were able to partner with uh, two people um, that we hired as organizers in residence. Uh, and so they, they actually supported students and teachers uh, in developing meaningful campaigns around the, the issues that students cared about. Um, and it was all kind of a big experiment because we, you know, we just came up with this idea of organizers in residence. No one had really done it before. Um, and we also couldn't plan for what the students <laughs> would eventually choose. So it was, it, it was a little bit scary, but it turned out in a really amazing way. And we we're really proud of the work that, the, that all the students did. So. Yeah, and I think, you know, when I think about that term, it's often, you hear it more frequently, artists in residence or someone who is right. supporting it. And I think it's an interesting play on words to think about, you know, what organizing is and how it's an art form uh, as yeah. well as being practical on and of itself. So yeah, really we, like we actually got the idea from uh, working with Enchanted Circle Theater as right. artists in residence. We'd done that several years back and so just came up with this new idea. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Um, and I'll say as someone who's gotten uh, letters and interviewed by students over uh, of yours over the past couple of years, I mean, I definitely felt like, including last year, you could definitely see the difference that before and after in terms of the, uh, the collective impact uh, was, was clearly on the minds of students in, mm -hmm. in a little bit of a different way this past year. Good. Yeah, so um, Kira, why don't we go to you? What was your role in the project? Um, we, it started off like everyone had their own separate projects. We would write like a letter to someone about something that was important to us. And we had like all of these different topics. And I'm pretty sure like there was three kids per thing at most. And most of it was like one person or two people. And then the organizers come, came in, read all of our letters, picked the things with the most people and organized it into those and made groups. Then we would like make videos and stuff, and we all got to choose which one we wanted. Mm -hmm. But I feel like um, it was kind of fun writing to like town officials and state officials and just like over the nation, like people who are like in charge, 
and everyone getting to talk to them and say like what they want to and to talk about these issues that they want to change. Mm -hmm. And for you, being a student, um, what was your initial um, letter about? Do you remember? I wrote about homelessness. Homelessness um, in the, our community or more generally um, or both? Both. Yeah. Mainly in our community but also kind of more generally. Yeah. And I think that's just a good tangible example to, to, to go back to Mr. Austin. How did you see your role in the project? Because you have students coming up with these ideas they are really passionate for. You have organizers and residents. And what's the role right. of the educator in, in this kind of really rich moment? Um, well, I, I felt like I had to wear a lot of hats. <laughs> um, and the, the most important one was working with the students and really facilitating this process that Kira was describing of, of you know starting off with student writing and then bringing that to the point where you eventually had um, a campaign that the class had come to consensus around. Um, and then from there, the, the work sort of shifted um, once the campaign started into um, teaching students the skills that it would take to get the job done and, and really affect change on the issues they cared about. Um, but then I also had this role of, of kind of working with other teachers. Uh, and because, you know, for most teachers, this was a totally new a totally new concept. Um, not the idea of project-based learning, but more the idea of, of, of organizing for change and what that, what that looks like. Um, and that's expanded this year because now we have, uh, starting in the next couple of weeks, we'll have three other schools launching the, launching the program. So I'm doing more coaching now, which yeah. is exciting for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is neat. And for you, Kira, as a student, what did it feel like the goal of the project was? Um. I feel like overall we were kind of answering, which we heard a lot, is answering this one big question, how does social change happen? Mm -hmm. And so like, it wasn't just like we thought about it and we figured out answers, we actually got to make social change happen and organize these big projects, which turned into a whole like big fair thing. <laughs> we'll get to that in a second, I think. No, that, that's helpful. And can you share, I mean, so you talked about homelessness being something you advocated for. Was that, did that end up once the organizers had all the letters in. Is that something that the class took on? Yes. I yeah. feel like it was either second or third place like out of all of the things. So we had like I think sev six or seven issues and like the top ones were homelessness, climate change, and like the school strike for climate slash sunrise movement. Fantastic. And and then your your class ended up going with the campaign to prevent deforestation. Yes. Yeah. Deforestation in, Mass in Massachusetts. There was a bill going around at that time. And so, yeah, I was curious from, to hear from you, Kira. How did you come up with the concept of homelessness? And then what was the dialogue that got to the deforestation? Well, comment? me and my friend, because once we figured out this thing, we actually started talking about it and like discussing all the problems in the world. And then we realized like homelessness is a big issue and there's all these things that connect to it. Yeah. So we were thinking, oh, maybe that would be a good thing. So me and a couple of my friends decided to write about that. And how did the deforestation one, how did that kind of evolve with the dialogue in your class? Um, well. At I know first, this was a. I know this was about nine months ago, so yeah, I know I'm. At first, a lot of people I feel like were kind of like more against it, and they were like, "Well, I really don't want to do this one, and I would rather do this one because we narrowed it down to like two, yeah. and people got pretty frustrated after voting because it was like tied, and they're like, "Oh, I don't want to do this one, but I want, and I don't want to do this one," so they kind of had to choose the one they wanted to do more, right. or the one that their friends were voting for. Yeah. So that's kind of how we ended up doing that, which also kind of tied into most what most of the other classes were doing and linked directly to what one of the other classes were doing. So that was kind of fun. We got to join classes and me and it was like because the classes with our friends, they were different quads. Right. So we would switch off some days and like kids from that class would come to our class oh. and vice versa. Right. That's neat. I think you've actually described the political process really well <laughs> <laughs> for adults, let alone kids. So um, no, that, I think that that's really helpful. And I think one of, you know, something that I see is just when we think about advocacy and being involved, it is that sometimes you have to work with others to make choices about what has the most impact at any given time. So I appreciate your description. And I also appreciate that it wasn't easy. <laughs> that when you're making a choice, it's, you know, it's somewhat binary, right? You choose A or you choose B uh, for this project. And, and there's some truth to that, um, even you know, outside a specific project. But who else was involved? So I know the students were involved, the um, artists and residents, excuse me, the organizers and residents, <laughs> residents were involved. Who else became involved in the work? Um, I feel like me and another kid, Trey, 
called a bunch of different businesses and got trees from the Amherst Tree Warden, Hadley Garden Center, Amherst Nurseries, and the Home Depot Garden. And then the kids and teachers from Jackson Street School in Northampton also got involved. And oh, wow. we made this giant tree out of cardboard, and they gave in leaves, and it was like, a Mr. Austin High and a student wide were the measurements. <laughs> <laughs> From your perspective, anything you'd add about other folks who were involved? Um, th there ended up being a lot of people involved in it. I thought about this in preparation for this uh, this taping, and there were, um, you know, Kara mentioned a couple of local businesses that had had helped out, but in addition to that, there ended up being um, students from at least three other schools, um, some very local, some farther afield, um, that were involved in the campaigns. There were elected officials, there were other organizations that were coalition partners of ours. Um, there were uh, members of the media that got involved. So it was, it, it, it ended up being hard to keep track of at some points <laughs> because there was so much going on yeah. um, it, it, amongst the four different classes. And as, as the primary instructor in the setting, how did you manage what Kira talked about, that there was you know, perhaps some disagreement among students about um, how to focus the energy and how to focus the work? Um, because you know, I used to teach fifth and sixth grade and right. at Fort River, and I know uh, Fort River fifth and sixth grade students can be incredibly passionate, yeah. and that's we want that. That's a good <laughs> thing. Um, but that, it does lead to a challenge around how to make sure that everyone's still on board and still supportive moving forward. Um, I think that was actually one thing that made that task easier was working with Steph and Lindsay, our, our organizers and residents, because they um, they have a lot of expertise around social movements and and actually did um, they did a lot of work uh, with with the students and the teachers uh, talking about sort of the intersectionality of the different issues that were that were at play. Um, and I think from my perspective, that ended up building. Um, probably more flexibility um, in the students' minds um, as as the project went on, you know, because I think when they when students started with their writing, they had kind of one issue in mind. But over the course of the next couple of weeks, they started to see the connections that there were between you know their issue and a friend's issue, and um, it ended up going. That part ended up going a lot more smoothly than I expected. It's <laughs> a good thing, and I see yeah. Kira nodding your head. Yeah, so. it kind of went more smoothly than I did because like kids will get into fights over what math problem is right <laughs> in the answer to a question. But then it is like kids actually got along a lot better than most people were expecting. I feel like because we were like, okay, I see how this connects to my issue. I guess I can agree to this. Or like they found something they wanted to do in the project. There were so many different parts and so many moving right. pieces and groups. Yeah. And like there was building a tree. There was organizing how to get the sa seedlings and saplings. There was reaching out to other schools and to family members and to people. And and there was just like writing stuff. You didn't even have to be like part of a public face. But there's also mm -hmm. like calling news people and getting them to come. So like everyone kind of found something that they wanted to do, and most people got to do that thing. That's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we uh, get a little more into details of the outcomes of the project and how it's stayed with you, Kira, we talked before the taping, and clearly, you know, that activism, um, it's only contributing to your work you're doing now at the middle school. You used the term before, project-based learning, and I'm just mm -hmm. wondering if you could, um, in a nutshell anyway, for our viewers, yeah. um, talk about that, because that may be a term that they're unfamiliar with. Um, well, that's project-based learning is something we've been talking about a lot at Fort River, and I know other schools in the district and, and other places um, are, are thinking about it a lot. And it's it's not something new necessarily, but it's just this idea that um, that students learn best most of the time by doing the things that we're trying to teach them, rather than simply learning about them. And um, and there's a whole there's a whole sort of movement about project project-based learning, and it wasn't something that that we consciously thought about in developing this this project, but in, in kind of learning about it more this year, it, what we're doing fits pretty squarely with yes. that. <laughs> I agree. No, thank you. I think that that's really helpful. So now we get to outcomes. What was the what were the some of the outcomes of the project? And you know, I'll start with Kira. What did you what do you feel like um, you learned through the process? I feel like a lot of students kind of got like their confidence boosted and realized that they actually can make changes happen, and mm -hmm. that it's. And that usually it's just and that it's like not just them who does this thing and especially like with all of the other like school strikes for climate and Greta Thunberg, all of that stuff, a lot of students were like, Oh, if can be just me and then a bunch of people can add on. So I feel like that has helped a lot. 
and with our teachers this year kind of adding on and like we do a thing every day one out of our seven day jobs exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, schedule <laughs> where we will work on something of our choice mm -hmm. uh, and those teachers will give us like four or five choices and each student gets to like choose one of those things a lot of times there's something to do with climate and there's clubs that will help with that so then like I feel like kids from who've done that project like get a lot more involved with that kind of thing mm -hmm. and I've noticed that we organized a school strike earlier this year and I noticed a lot of people who were working on that project with me like we're coming in doing that wanting right. to be part of it. Fantastic thanks. From your perspective in terms of outcomes? Um, I mean I was thrilled with how the project turned out like I said it was it was kind of an experiment and <laughs> um, you know that some of the some of the outcomes that, that Kira mentioned I would totally agree with you know I think I think having students um, see themselves as agents of change yeah. is, is really the best thing to come out of this. Um, but then also some of the specific, some of the specific tactical outcomes that, that, um, that happened within, within a given campaign were, were pretty exciting and unique. And you know, the, the six foot tree that Kira mentioned, <laughs> it was made basically all the leaves on it were uh, signed by different students from Fort River and then also Jackson Street School, and a small group of students delivered that to the State House um, to some of the sponsors of the bill as like a thank you. Um, we had students uh, working to change the Massachusetts state flag who gained a lot of media attention around the issue, you know, both locally and in, in um, even in the Boston Globe. And so, just to see sixth graders do those those things that. I, I used to teach college students about and right. see the sixth graders have a, a pretty similar level of success, sometimes exceeding what I saw with college students is just marvelous. I, yeah. I'm so happy with it. <laughs> yeah, thanks. And, and why don't I stay with you, Tim, just if you could talk a little bit about how the project's expanding. You sort of, you touched on it right. earlier, but how the project's expanding this year. Um, so we, again, have uh, support from Teaching Tolerance. Uh, we, we won another grant, another round of funding uh, from them. So. Um, our organizers and residents are, are working with us again this year. Um, and the teaching team at Fort River last year had a goal of recruiting at least one other school to be doing this type of work. So we are really excited that um, there are uh, three additional schools in, in our district now that are going to be um, that are going to be doing the project. Uh, and actually, this week are going to be kicking that work off. Um, and so, uh, we had a couple of uh, professional development days, uh, one in November and then one just a couple of weeks ago, uh, where teachers sort of learned about the uh, about the work and, and what we did at Fort River last year and then spent a good deal of time planning uh, together and with, with our organizers and residents um, to make it happen. So hopefully we'll have not only the chance for more students to do that type of work, but also to make connections across schools. I think that's going to be probably easier than it was last year. You, you all worked really hard to recruit, yeah. and, and it, it worked. Yeah, it was but like, it was, you know, it's a tough task. Like, it was students in the class who were like reaching out to step siblings, cousins, mm -hmm. people all over the place. Yeah. So, friends even, like in other states and stuff, and then like, yeah, tell your school about this, or other teachers, like, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and most of the schools who are involved, actually all of the schools who are or now getting involved this year were um, schools that students reached out to last year oh, okay. and, and got involved in the projects in one way or another. Right. Yeah, and it's nice you're going to build momentum year after year. And do you yeah. mind mentioning which other schools in the district are participating with you? This uh, year? So the sixth grades at uh, Pelham and Crocker Farm are right. also going to be um, working on this. And then the uh, seventh grade social studies teachers right. uh, at the Amherst Regional Middle School are um, doing a slightly different version of the project. Um, I don't know. If they've told you about it yet, Kira, but no, um, that'll I be. I haven't, but I feel coming. like students have been picking up on stuff like that because we're like ending a unit now. Yeah. And they were, they've been hinting about some big projects. <laughs> awesome. The cat's out of the bag, I suppose, Kira, but uh, that's okay. Um, and um, we're uh, one of the really exciting things to come out of uh, the professional development series that we did is um, we've now sort of developed this idea of a. a a, a civic engagement arc, we're calling it, starting in sixth grade, going through seventh, and then eventually into eighth grade, where the state is now requiring a, a civic engagement project, um, and eventually high school. We haven't gotten there yet, but that's the plan. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fantastic, and I think it's also just such a, a fit 
developmentally for students like yourself who are entering that kind of early adolescent phase and they want to own learning and they want to be leaders and sometimes it's hard for schools to figure out the structures to right. harness that positive energy and, and do it. You're talking about Kira and be a leader um, for social change so I love that this is now expanding you know, beyond where it started. Um, and thank you for applying for that grant again, sure. not only, only on behalf of Fort River, but on behalf of the other, uh, some of the other schools in the district. Um, we're, wrap, we're getting close to the end of our time here, but uh, for either of you, what lessons did you learn that you can apply in other situations, or you know, what are, what are things that you took out of the experience? I'll start with you, Kara. Um, a lot of like, more talking skills and like, how to co like, convince people. I feel like I'm more persuasive and kind of like, can sh convince people of things more often. Also, I feel like a lot of people know more about this issue now because like I was mentioning earlier we did a fair where all of the students planned it was entirely student planned and organized and so that freedom I feel like a lot of students got a certain freedom they don't usually have and there's like all these stations and we invited um, representatives and I think it was Mindy Dom actually mm -hmm. came and got a sapling and we got a picture <laughs> we think um, pictures with everyone with their saplings and so that was fun like and that got the whole school involved I'm pretty sure the students liked that because they got to get out of class for like 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> and then there was a giant basketball game, so that was fun. With the prize being, do you remember? Um, a tree to plant at your school. And who won that? Us. <laughs> By far. <laughs> Mr. Ross, anything else you'd like to share about, you know, things that, you know, lessons you learned or how the project's developed over time and what it's like as the instructor? Um, I think, for me, one of the biggest lessons um, has been that, well, one of the things we're trying to teach the students is that social change happens on a very long scale, that yeah. it's this thing that is not, is not one in, in a week. It's not one in a you know, in, in six week project or anything like that. It's, it's something that takes a really long time. And um, that's almost, for me, that's, that also feels like it applies to developing work like this as mm -hmm. a teacher. And you know, this, is, this is something that's taken you know, I think we, we first did the, the old civic literacy unit five, six years ago, and, and now we're at this point where it looks very different. Um, and so just for me, I think the value of working with a team over a long period of time, because, you know, uh, Tammy Sullivan Daly and Tori Weed and I have been, and have been working at this for, for years, and, and now it's to the point where it, we, we feel that it, we can kind of invite other teachers in and, and really try to try to build the work beyond what we've done. Um, so I think I think that long view is, is what I'm thinking about a lot. <laughs> I think it's a good lesson actually for the students as well that because um, it's uh, just thinking back about my childhood and, and some of the activism that that I witnessed it was uh, very temporal in nature mm -hmm. and that you know like climate deforestation those those things aren't solved very quickly or very easily and to have that long view both yeah. instructionally but also for the students is incredibly important. I mean, yeah. so a whole lot of people working in New Hampshire today for uh, lots of different <laughs> candidates and with really different viewpoints and uh, the reality is today's one stop on their on their journey uh, leading to, you know, Tuesday a couple weeks from now which will be a bigger stop and then all the way down to an election and all the way down to making decisions in the future and um, I think that's hard, you know, but I think having having students like yourself, Kira, not just learn that it's a long process, but learn that you're in it for the process and you're in it for the long haul. Uh, there's nothing more important that we can do for our students than um, affect the world that way. So thank yeah. you both. You're welcome. And thank you both for coming on the show and sharing your opinions. I know it's not in your normal daily experience to be in a <laughs> television studio, but uh, Amherst Media is such you know welcoming host. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. And thank you very much for viewing this latest episode of Window into Arves. We'll be back soon with the next episode, and we hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.